The thing is, is do you believe if you're not growing, you're dying? And every single person in your organization, it's the same thing. If they're not growing, they're dying. And so whether it's a salesperson that goes to a sales manager, that goes to a GM, you have to give people a place to grow where they go. And if they outgrow their leadership, they move on. Maybe they can become your competition. They create their own roofing company. Maybe they go work for your competition and come take all your salespeople. But my point is, is that, you know, there's a lot of dangers to try and not trip over here at this $5 million step. What's up everybody, Lee Haight here. Welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom Special Edition. In this episode, I'm gonna tell you the top three priorities that contractors get wrong. Look, Jocko Willink, he's coming to speak at the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. In leadership, he says you have to prioritize and execute. And I will tell you that there's different types of contractors, $1 million contractors, and they got their priorities. We're going to go over a list of those. There's $5 million contractors, and they've got a different list of priorities. And then you got your eight-figure plus big dogs in the market that are growing every year and they have their priorities. Guys, like, subscribe, comment below. This is for salespeople, contractors, uh, roofing contractors, solar guys. And look, it starts with $1 million in sales. And if you are a $1 million contractor, maybe this is the first step. Look, I congratulate you because you obviously know how to sell your product. You believe in doing a good job. You're probably getting word of mouth referrals. And a lot of times, you know, a good $1 million contractor comments on my Facebook things like, uh, why would you need to advertise? We got plenty of word of mouth jobs. All we need to do is do a good job and you can get more customers. Now, if you believe that all you need to do is do a good job and you can get more customers, I'm not going to say you're wrong. What I'm going to say is there's somewhat of a limit to how big you can scale. And many times, you know, if you're a $1 million contractor, this is what we do. We get into contracting, whether you're uh, a plumber, remodeler, window guy. Maybe you were good at installing the windows and you know you prided yourself as a blue collar worker out there, outside, installing the windows with perfection, knowing the details about your product. And so you go into the business of owning windows. And you know what your focus is? Your focus is your product, your quality, your service. And look, Give me some comments if you believe that quality and service is the most important thing in a business. And that would fall into what I call basically um, the fulfillment category. Uh, and fulfillment would be anything that was required to actually build the project. And, you know, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, you know, since we're good at maybe building windows or we're good at installing roofs, so let me take my guy Sterling who uh, from Michigan actually started on the roof. And you know, he learned how to become a, a master shingle applicator. And you know, my man Sterling, he's up on this roof, he's working with the crew, and you know, he says, all right, great, now all I need is a truck and a trailer. So now Sterling, he's got himself a truck, he's got himself a trailer, and he's rolling down the road. One trailer and one truck and a good roofing crew, a man can do a good job. And chances are that even if you don't really go knock on doors, that there's a chance you're gonna do one of the neighbor's jobs. And I will tell you, like fulfillment is great because you know we live in a world where people love improving their homes. And whenever you take true pride in your workmanship, you do really get this customer service, like massive spread, but it's inconsistent. And what are the problems that you face with depending on word of mouth referrals? Let's just take my man, um, best damn roofer. He's gonna be at the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Big time! He's on the roof doing the diamond shingles, the shingles uh, that, and, and really installing a quality product. In his market, it's a small area. You know, he cares most about his fulfillment. He's getting leads through the internet, but he's got one or two roofing crews. He's on the crew working, and there's a limited amount of impact that can actually happen in revenue. And so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, like, my man Best Damn Roofer is really good at communication and that is the key to good sales. And I would say that everybody knows, like if you do a good roof, you can communicate with the homeowner, all right? Like, 
y'all may not know this, but BDR's character is not really how he is in real life. It might have been how he was six years ago going through some tough times, but whenever things are really on the job, he's professional with the customers. He can communicate like a regular guy. And you know, the one thing about BDR is he's really talented. And so I know for a fact that the man is really focused on doing quality work, whether it's the diamond shingles or the asphalt shingles, and he does know how to sell, which is good, all right? But you know, the reality is, is following a sales process, duplicating yourself, getting more leads. This is how you get to the next step. And this is really where a lot of times, um, even it's like one to $2 million. Uh, a lot of times, if you focus on doing a good job and you focus on sales and say you have enough word of mouth referrals, you might hire your first salesman. And now you're starting to grow. Maybe you're moving into a potential $2 million company. But what is that last uh, focus or priority? You know, Jocko says prioritize and execute. If you're 1 million looking to go to 2 million, you know, doing better jobs will get you more word of mouth referrals. But if you're doing, why can't you, anything that you can hire someone else and they can get accomplished for 70% less, like installing the roof, you can either train somebody or hire a subcontractor or selling the project. You can hire someone to do the estimate to sell the job or even project manage quality control you know, or the paperwork involved in the permitting process. There's recruit, hire, train in each phase of the business. The main portion of the business that really helps and accelerates growth is roofing sales pros. Turn this homeowner into a roofing sales pro. He's got his cape right here because he is the most important lead a roofing company or a contracting company can attract. Why? Why is a new recruit that generates his own leads, the most important lead that somebody can hire. It's because like if you get a lead off the internet and you sell a big project, you sell it once, maybe you get a couple of referrals. If you get this guy to learn the five eyes of the blue collar clothes, to follow our system, then this guy can potentially create $1 million to $2 million in revenue on his own. He can duplicate you. And so basically, most people don't focus on creating these guys that are $1 million to $2 million contractors. You also don't maybe have production management in place. A lot of times I see like um, a lot of times people say, Lee, this roofing business, it's driving me crazy. You know, um, you know, it's like burning a candle at both ends because uh, I'm ordering the shingles. I'm dealing with complaining customers. I'm dealing with roofers. I'm selling jobs. I'm running all over the city. And I'm living out of my truck, working 70, 80 hours a week. When I get home, I hit the bed and three o'clock I crash. And it's a lot of times because there's not investing time, see, into other people. And so that brings me to the next step, the next set of priorities. Great, you've made it this far. Maybe you're a bigger company and you wanna know like what are the priorities of your typical $2 million to $5 million company. Maybe you have goals to be a $2 million to $5 million company. And so and you wanna know, Lee, what do I focus on? And so hopefully this list, it's very simple. Jocko says to keep your leadership commands and lessons simple. And so these are the same three priorities and that's what's really cool about it. This is the difference between two to $5 million companies and one to $2 million companies. And that is that the number one, the number one thing they focus on is sales. They know that sales is the lifeblood of an organization. A lot of time, two to five million dollar companies have had one million dollar producer, and they realize that winners create winners, and maybe they've created two more high level roofing sales, contracting sales pros that produce maybe 500K to a million dollars in sales. Now they have the beginning of a sales team. If these guys go door to door, they create their own leads. But if these guys depend on um, retail, they're, they're gonna need something a little bit more than being able to go out there and knock on doors. They're gonna need leads. And that's where I would say um, 
people start to realize at two to five million that the more leads, and we can go and we can look into the math a little bit. Um, the question I ask contractors is, you know, it's funny. It's like, there's a law in marketing. It's called he who can spend the most to acquire the customer wins the market. And it's like spend the most to win. Well, you don't want to spend money on advertising that you're not making a return on investment. And the cool thing about selling like roofs and solar and some of the stuff is they're big projects. So a lot of profit, one lead, you make a lot of money. And so if we're talking about sales and retail, and I'm not doing door to door, but I want to, I want to grow and I want to focus on sales. The one thing you're going to have to master is this blue collar marketing method in the funnel. And you've got your quality work and your word of mouth referrals. You want to accelerate it. You do this through uh, social media, through Nextdoor app, through all the organic postings. Um, there's a lot of different ways for free using SEO, getting reviews and updating your Google My Business that people are going to come to you just because you're coming up on the map, just because you're posting on your social media. And that's one way to sort of organically grow it. But then you've also got your, your paid ads and, and the paid social media ads are coming from Facebook, they're coming from Google, and usually two to $5 million companies do have somewhat of some sort of lead source there. You've also got your postcards, your direct mail, that's also going into the pipeline. And then you've got maybe, maybe you're buying leads, maybe you're buying them, even if you're buying them from Home Advisor or you're buying them from Angie's List. Uh, I don't buy from Home Advisors or Angie's List. I, I, I will generate my own telemarketing leads. And so we'll basically go out there and set an appointment. And so these leads go into the funnel. And if I'm a business, it's pretty simple math. And I'll just walk you through some of the stats of my business now. Our goal um, is to generate 10,000 appointments. Now, 10,000 uh, roof appointments uh, are different than just leads. Just because someone says they're interested doesn't mean that they're an appointment. And so I don't, I don't really track the numbers until we make an appointment. And I know right now that it's costing us on average about $200 an appointment between all of these lead sources. And so if it's $200 appointment and my company has a 30% closing rate, the most important thing that you start to learn about is the dollars per sale, the dollars per lead, and the amount of return on investment that you're getting out of the, out of the money. And so bottom line is, is that if we have uh, 10,000 leads and it's 200 an appointment, how much is that going to cost? Two million bucks. It's going to cost us two million bucks. And here's the thing. About... 3,000 of these are going to convert and they're going to be about 20K a job. So how much is that? 60 million bucks. And so a lot of times when it comes to like this math, if you can scale your advertising at that level, then man, you're actually creating more leads than you have salespeople and you create a new problem. And that's why I would say that at two to five million, people realize that recruiting is a massive issue and that they need to focus on hiring people. They're hiring crews, they're hiring project managers, production managers, uh, office staff. And so one thing about recruiting is once you create so many leads, you, you, you're getting this math equation means you can't you create, you still have to have someone go out to the house to survey the, to survey the house, to make sure that it's legit. And that, that's what is always going to keep the human element in roofing or contracting. We are closing a lot of them virtual, but there's still an element of in-person. And so the reality is, is two to $5 million companies, they focus on recruiting second. All right. And a lot of times, Here's what I see with two to $5 million companies. They don't have a process for recruiting. They may be good at recruiting. They may tell their friends about it. They may have an organic brand. They may put an ad out every once in a while, but they don't have consistent time dedicated to it. They don't have hours. They don't have a recruiting coordinator. They don't have a recruiting funnel. They don't have a recruiting system. And they're constantly having a hard time. I hear this all the time because this is probably where most contractors who are reaching out to me for help, they already have a business and they want to grow it, but they're struggling stuck in this spot. It's because they don't spend any time 
on recruiting. And no one knows who they are. They don't have an employment brand. They don't realize that roofing isn't as sexy as, say, solar sales. And that's one of the things like in recruiting right now that I'm realizing is, look, this market really is, is you, you give them what they want. Uh, the people are more likely to come sell solar than they are to come sell roofing. So it, I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. Even on my YouTube, some of my solar YouTube videos go more viral because there's a bigger audience for it. And so that's why if you're a two to $5 million company, you could start getting, and especially if you're a roofing company, more sales reps just by adding a solar division. And so if you come to the bluecollarconference.com, Blue Collar American Dream Conference, we'll teach you how to do that. But the last step, and I see this a lot, would be immediately, I would say that whether fulfillment, that is, you got so much sales going on, you're trying to train people, whether you're having a hard time with your estimates, your work orders, keeping up with all your customers, because you're struggling in some of these other departments, because recruiting isn't the exact priority, you're always like having to basically over commit and deliver under service and under performance. So fulfillment, I see, oftentimes becomes actually the third priority. And it's a lot of times guys that are 1 million, they want to go to 10 million, they see other people that go and they, they, they create these problems for themselves and they, they think, oh my God, I can't make it through that. And that's when you have to understand the cycle of growth because this is from Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio wrote a book called Principles and this is the cycle of growth, okay? This, let's say, is your entrepreneur journey. You start your business, this is day one, start your business, start day. And you're growing your business and let's say you grow it to $1 million. Well, great, now you've learned how to do a good job, you sell, but the thing is, is you hire the sales rep, you don't have enough word of mouth referrals for him, winter comes along, you focus on production, sales drops. You focus on sales, production drops. And you start adding overhead expense. You're testing some of these lead methods. You don't know them. The business starts to break. Maybe you lose a little bit of money. See, this right here is called a stumbling block. See, you're, you're marching up this hill. You're going all the way up to the top of this mountaintop. And you're going, and you, you get to $1 million. And then you trip. And then you go, whoa! And you're falling down. And you think, oh my God, I'm going backwards. Here I am. Maybe this is, uh, maybe this is one year into it. Maybe this is five years into it. Maybe it's 10 years into it. I don't know where your line is, but I know one thing. The first thing you have to do is you have to become aware of the problem. And that's right there. And then you have to redesign a solution. Okay, redesign a solution. What does that mean? It means maybe you need to hire a production manager. Maybe you need to learn how to advertise on the internet. Maybe you need to have someone in charge as your office manager. Maybe you need a CRM. These are all different things that could be the stumbling block that caused you to fall on your face. But if you didn't grow your business, you'd have never figured it out. So you have to redesign a solution. Once you put that thing in place, there is a little bit more pain, but then you start making progress to get back to right where you want to go and you start coming back up on this road again. And we're going up this road. And now we make it to $5 million and we hit another stumbling block. And what is it? It's that we don't have enough good crews. We don't have enough good workers. It's that we don't have uh, big enough uh, duplicatable systems to fulfill all the new work. So quality suffers. We don't have the uh, amount of infrastructure to put in place. So timeline of getting to be able to service somebody, even if we do a really good job, you have to wait six months, a year to get it done. Guess what? People want stuff now. So you can't get to them. People are not giving you the same reviews. Once you get to this point, this is where like some people say, grow your business to 5 million locally and make as much money as you can. But the thing is, is do you believe if you're not growing, you're dying? And every single person in your organization is the same thing. If they're not growing, they're dying. And so whether it's a salesperson that goes to a sales manager, that goes to a GM, you have to give people a place to grow where they go. And if they outgrow their leadership, they move on. Maybe they can become your competition. They create their own roofing company. Maybe they go work for your competition and come take all your salespeople. But my point is, is that, you know, there's a lot of dangers to try and not trip over here at this $5 million step. Now you can keep the overhead low, make more money and lose people along the way and constantly be one of these guys that 
maybe makes good profits on it, but is never gonna be one of the top five, top 10 roofers in your market. It's never gonna be a guy that builds a business worth eight figures or more. It's never gonna be a guy who builds life-changing generational wealth and makes the kind of impact on the community that changes maybe thousands of lives or hundreds of lives. And so for me, it's not just about the money, it's about the journey to continue to go up the mountaintop. So once I got 5 million, I was like, man, this is not enough. And that brings us to the next set of priorities, guys. You've got to get these things in line. Um, there's some things that you can do to fix this, but that brings us to the next step. Let's go to the next step of what it takes, the priorities of a $10 million contractor. All right, so here we are, $5 million, trying to grow to 10. And you know, at $10 million, people are starting to recognize you in the marketplace. You're starting to be maybe a top five contractor in your area. Maybe you're one of the regional players that's continuing to grow. Maybe you're getting recognized by manufacturers, by suppliers, when in all kinds of different volume discounts and rebates. Look, this is an exciting thing. It's an exciting time and you wanna to continue to grow because every step along the way is fun. Life is a journey, it's not a destination. This mountain never stops growing. You never get to the top. You have to learn to enjoy it. But when you get to this point, what, where, where are the trips? Where do you trip up? You trip up at about seven and a half million in sales and what all happens? Well, things start to fall apart. Leadership becomes an issue, getting everybody on the same page. Um, finances, money becomes an issue because especially if you're doing insurance or you're doing retail, let's say you're doing retail, you're investing into advertising, you're generating leads, but if you don't know your return on investment, there's a lot of different holes, opportunities for you to lose money. It's like you have a boat with all these different holes. Do you have automated follow-up? Do you have an inside sales department that calls on the leads, that follows up on the sales reps? Do you call every internet lead within five minutes? If you don't, you're burning money. And sometimes you gotta figure out this, these, these things along the way. And so a lot of times it comes down to you don't have the right person in the right place. If you wanna take a good business to a great business, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta build a great team you got to get the people on the bus. Then you got to put the right people in the right place on the bus. You got to get everybody in alignment. And so, you know, for me, I think it's a foundation that you get your core values, mission statement, that you post up all of the different job descriptions. We actually have an organizational chart for our company, and it shows sort of a clickable way what people's hierarchy is and what their job descriptions are, what their key metrics are. And it's something that I learned from Mark Banoff, uh, founder of Salesforce. And the reality is, is like getting your team in alignment, getting better systems. Like whenever the money problems had, you had to build uh, additional accounting. You had to build a collections department. We had to build an inside sales department to keep up with the volume of internet leads. These issues that come about, they all can be solved with one thing. You wanna guess what that is? Don't, 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 comment below. Subscribe, guys, if you like this content. And it doesn't matter what kind of contractor you are. Tell me what you are below. Um, I'll tell you what it is, and this is my superpower. I'm not organized. I'm kind of uh, passionate, which could be actually a, a weakness of mine in leadership at times. Um, I'm certainly a guy that uh, likes to focus on sales, which means sometimes I don't listen to everybody as well as I should. But one thing I do well that overcomes all of my weaknesses, that actually has allowed me to go all the way to a hundred million dollar company, all right? Is that I focus on recruiting first. What? Recruiting first, Lee? What do you mean? I've, I've gotta build a quality product. I've gotta sell more jobs so that I can keep the cash flowing. Look, I understand I gotta recruit more, but I gotta pay the bills, I gotta keep the neighborhood going, no one can sell as good as me. This is where I see a big problem owners that sell their own jobs, sales managers that, that are out there putting more time and attention into selling their own book of business than building enterprise value in their team. When you duplicate and you get a human being, and let's just say our recruiting funnel over here, which is really the biggest differentiator and how we help companies double sales every year, because listen, most of y'all come to me and you come to me at this $5 million, two to $5 million level and you wanna to get to 10. We took a guy from 2 million to 18 million. If you wanna know how we added 7.2X growth in um, two years, 
this is what we did. We got all the recruits off Indeed. We got all the recruits off Facebook. We created uh, local recruiting events. We went and we hired guys like uh, there was a UPS, uh, no, an Amazon delivery driver making 20 bucks an hour. Now he's a $2 million retail roofing sales pro because of when I went and taught Ricky how to do an event, basically, you know, he recreated it monthly. There's a lot of good talent there. He had a lot of leads at a, as a two to $5 million company when he first came into the, to the business. Like when he grew to 8 million, the biggest thing was he had a way to generate leads through video. And now he needed more salespeople. And so um, the way that we really kind of, it's not just recruiting, it's actually, and this is like recruit, hire, train. Because if you recruit somebody and they don't stick, this, then, then they're worthless. So it's the whole process. And so the real deal is, is the online university and, the, and what we do to separate the serious from the curious is we send them through the recruiting funnel. We send them through the online university. We do a group Zoom interview where we get them ready to run through walls. It's just like a presentation that helps them understand all the other people that have been successful, helps them see the vision of the company and it's funny because people think that you can skip that step, but they don't understand we're trying to win their hearts and minds. And so people don't want to come sell roofs, but listen, they do want to sell solar and you can show them how roofing and contracting sales is sexy and it's the future and we don't do the jobs, you sell the jobs. But the reality is, is you got to learn how to get as much traffic through recruiting, through paid advertising, through job boards. And you need to put human beings through this funnel. And this needs to be basically, you're building an army. And, and really when it comes down to uh, what kind of army you're building, look, if you're a contractor, you're gonna have project managers to hire. You're gonna have, maybe you're an HVAC and you're hiring installation techs. Look, Pour into the culture of your company, document it, give uh, incentivized bonuses to your existing team, and then you'll see all of it spread through social media. And it's about creating an employment brand. Your problem is no one knows who you are, no one knows your business. In 2012, 2010, you didn't even have to go and create content, tell your story, have an Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, but now you do. And if you wanna separate yourself from the others, one of the biggest challenges here is no brand. And, and, and I see this tripping up because maybe a, a guy, a, a, a good salesman wants to grow and that remember that guy, there's another influencer online that tells you to stay to $5 million. Well, when, they're, when that guy's ready to grow, he leaves that company, he comes to my company, he learns our system, he has an opportunity to maybe build a $10 million, $20 million book of business. And it's because why? Because we built a brand and we attract top talent and we teach people how to do the same thing. But number one thing, you're not, you're not prioritizing this. How much time does, you, and this means, do you have a recruiting coordinator? Do you have a recruiting department? What's your budget for a recruiting department? How do you separate the serious from the curious? How do you sell from stage your brand? Look, we're blue collars. The trades industry are looked down upon. What do you do to get people in your business? And so it becomes whether, and I talked to a billion dollar company, a billion dollar solar sales organization that gets all their deals through door to door sales, 1400 sales reps in the state of Florida. Recruiting is the key, not to 10 million, not to 100 million, but to a billion dollars because solar is expensive, because people want in it, because there's an epidemic of really great opportunity and people are sick of being lied to about higher education is the better way. There is opportunity for the taking for people that can sell the American dream. And once you really learn how to do it, you focus on this first and then you get that production manager that is the rock star production manager. You get sales trainers that are incredible leaders. You get people to head up supplement department, accounting. You get people that are head up your customer care and collections team. And as you go along, you build departments through decentralized command, putting people in charge. And I can tell you that my company is easier to run as nearly a $100 million company than it was when it was a $5 million company. Why? Because we have a brand, we have the people, we have the resources, we have the leadership. And it comes down to this number one thing. Now, what, what, what is the second thing that we focus on? 
we focus on sales and sales are driven by leads. So one of the things that we focus on at our RCA is three things. These are, these are the three things my sales managers have to do and report on every single week, every single week. Okay. Their responsibility, sales managers, to get leads coming in is to create one video a week for the blue collar marketing method. These are Facebook video ads, just one a week. All you gotta do is one video ad a week. Usually, you get a sales rep that wants growth. You can get your sales reps to create one a week. Then you have a whole handful of video ads to pick from. You use the best ones, you split test the best ones. The more content, the more leads. So every single person knows to drive sales, we need the leads, we need the appointments, we need to build the brand, we need, and so this is one of the things that's required. Now it's not, it's actually not the number one focus. I got it backwards. The number one focus is hardcore door to door. And what does that mean? Well, that's, did they follow the five eyes of the blue collar clothes? Did they train in the university for two segments of content that day with me? Did they show up to the door-to-door church that was ran by the sales manager or the sales manager got their goal? Did they get in an active WhatsApp chat where everyone was sharing their wins, their goals, the daily deal count? Are they a part of a sales contest with some sort of event rewards? Are they being recognized um, for weekly sales? Because we know recognition drives sales more than anything. Are they being held accountable through contact over content? to be in the field and are your sales reps, rep, are they averaging you know, one job turned in per rep per week, two jobs turned in per rep per week, three jobs turned in per rep per week? How many leads are they generating? How many jobs are they turning in? These are the things that we focus on to run the book of business. And the next thing, and the reality is here for sales, this is probably, um, the most important thing, and that's gonna be our approach to sales. Yes, we use the five eyes of the blue collar clothes to close every deal, but it's our method. It's the hybrid approach. What is it? It's called solar insurance retail, sir. That's what we call it, solar insurance retail. And we offer them a contingency agreement, contingent upon approval. We can do your roof for no more than what the insurance company pays. Hey, if your insurance company doesn't prove, we have energy effective evaluation that we can do. We can get you qualified to save potentially $100,000 and you may qualify for a roof that's practically th- free through government programs. And th- that's basically how if they don't get approved for an uh, insurance roof, we set the stage for solar. And if it's not a good fit for solar, and let's just say that they are getting a letter from their insurance company that says that they must replace their roof or they're going to go, then we offer a 20 year loan with no dealer fee. We get low interest, a price value guarantee. We give them two options, 0% interest up to 12 months or a low monthly payment. What do you prefer? But we go after three different types of, of neighborhoods. We go after asphalt shingles and, and roofing. You know, that's just like your regular deals. Whatever your regular deals, we go after our high-end residential. This is our metal roofs. This is our tile roofs. It's a big portion of our book of business. We believe that the more, the higher the value, there's about four ways we can add revenue or bottom line to your profit. You can get twice as many leads. You can close twice as many leads. You can close those leads for twice as much money. All right, well, High-end residential is one way to do it, and the third way to do it is land commercial deals. So as far as sales goes, we're working solar, insurance, and retail, asphalt, high-end residential, and commercial. We're throwing one video ad a week. We're sending postcards around all of our builds, and we have a hardcore door-to-door culture to promote everything. And look, when it comes down to it, I'm a roofing recruiting company that's about changing the lives of blue collar entrepreneurs first. I have to get the customers first before I can build the job. But look, we're judged and make the money not on what we sell, but what we collect and the review that we get from our client because we live in a transparent world. And I'm proud of the fact that in every single market that our RCA is ranked literally over four and a half stars. And so our fulfillment 
has been inconsistent at times when we go to new markets. Our fulfillment's been times when, when we try to grow and we double in sales and we, we, we bring in people that are untrained. And that's just the truth. If you're in rapid scaling mode, sometimes you have to be willing to uh, understand like you can fix anything that goes wrong in construction and you didn't mean to hurt their feelings or their house, but you do everything you can to put systems in place to prevent damage and chaos in people's lives. And every time you experience trauma, you fix it. You do the next right thing. And you try to prevent it from happening again. Unfortunately, you can't learn without getting punched in the mouth. But if you look at our company, been in business since 1993, stood behind every promise, stood behind every job, five-star rated in a transparent world with an A-plus rating, you realize even if you focus on recruiting first, sales second, and fulfillment third, that you still can have a five-star rating across the board, which in a world of Google reviews is crucial. So it's not that I don't think doing quality work is important. I, I didn't say that. You, don't, you can't get the opportunity to do quality work unless you have a good crew, unless you have a good salesman to sell the job. You can't get the job unless you get the lead or get the customer first. And then you do the job. More importantly, when you're scaling, I wanna know how much time that you have in systems and recruiting. What are your sales systems? Do you have training for insurance, solar, and retail? Do you have a process for insurance, solar, and retail? Are you able to sell high-end residential, commercial? Are you able to penetrate these markets? If you are, we can either help you get more leads, we can help you sell the jobs for a higher price, or you know, we can help you sell an additional product, which solar is a completely different animal. And when you can sell an additional product, that's the fourth way to make more money off of the same book of business. And so if you wanna grow your business, these are the things that you need to be focused on. And look, if you want me to help you grow your business, then I'd be happy to. If you're a $1 million contractor, I know it's crazy for you to think that fulfillment is not as important as hiring new people. Um, if you're a $5 million company, it's probably hard for you to think that your sales process and your salesmen are not as important as recruiting and hiring and training the people to grow your company. Look, maybe it's just the executing that you have a hard time with. I wanna invite you to spend three days with me so that I can help you to prioritize to execute whatever it takes. It's not just about doubling sales, it's about doubling the time that you have with your family which increases the quality of life and prioritizing more time on recruiting and sales and getting the people in the right place for fulfillment will then give you what we call the American dream. That's why I wanna invite you to the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Look, Jocko Willink, he taught me like keep things simple this is such simple advice for you. Recruit first, sell second, fulfill third. All you need to do to grow your contracting business, get more contracting sales pros, and you gotta keep them busy. If you're not a door-to-door -door guy doing insurance, you're not a door-to-door -door guy doing solar, then you gotta generate leads. Leads through social media, through Google, through direct mail, to feed the beast, to get the sales. And that's really like your process. How does it work? Look. We want to teach you the whole thing, give you the roadmap, and it doesn't matter if you're a solar contractor, roofing contractor, it doesn't matter what business you're in, you need to be at the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Jocko Willink's going to be there, Ed Milet's going to be there, Ed's talking about influence, Jocko's teaching you how to lead like a Navy SEAL, Dan Rooney, founder of Folds of Honor, he's going to talk about how his uh, experience as a fighter pilot, his experience training fighter pilots has helped him really tap into something that People really have a hard time with it in these uncertain times. I've seen people taken out by all these changes in the world, and I know that you need the things that Dan Rooney have to talk about to use faith to overcome fear. And that's why I wanna invite you to the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. I'm gonna go through my complete scaling roadmap at the conference. You're gonna hear from leaders like Jocko Willink, Ed Milet, and also to kickstart the conference, we're doing a fight night, a charity fight night. There's gonna be MMA fights. I'm gonna be doing a submission grappling match with BDR. It's roofer versus roofing salesman, and it's gonna be off the chain because a portion of all proceeds go to benefit Folds of Honor, a charity for families who have paid the ultimate price. And those are people that Dan Rooney connected me with after reading his book, Fly Into the Wind. Guys, if you enjoyed this content, like, subscribe, tell me what you think. If you think I got it all wrong, let me know in the comments. And until next time, y'all be real.